Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. Today marks the very last day of the 2023 preserving season for me here on our farm and I am definitely ready for it. I have canned well over a thousand jars of preserves. I have run my freeze dryer, dryer pretty much all summer. I have tons of freeze dried food and all of my freezers are full. I'm feeling very happy about all of that, but also very ready for the slower months of winter. My husband and I were just talking about this as we were sitting in front of the fire this morning that both of us can feel this sense of relief that we're coming to the end of this really busy time and looking forward to the winter and neither Dan or I like the winter. We're not fans of the cold. We don't really like the snow, but this year it feels like it's kind of a forced slowdown time which we are both very much ready for. I may end up doing a little bit of canning over the winter, but it will just be a few cans here and there. So for instance, when we make a turkey, I will take those turkey bones and turn them into turkey broth and I will can those up. I also, I'm not sure how many jars of beans I ended up doing this summer, but I might end up having to can up a couple of jars of beans. But for the most part, I'm going to be completely done with preserving until probably around the end of June in 2024. Today's recipe I'm really looking forward to because it's a new one to me and it is one that comes highly recommended by many of you and that is an onion jam and I'm going to be using balsamic vinegar. I love balsamic vinegar so I found a recipe that calls for balsamic vinegar and I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. So we are going to be canning that up today. The other thing that we're going to be doing, you can see my freeze dryer trays set up over here, is freeze drying a whole bunch of onions. So if you'll remember, in the last video, I had a whole bunch of boxes of onions right now. I only have one left. Uh, so I went through all those onions this morning and I separated out anything that I thought wasn't going to last well for storage. So anything that was starting to soften a little bit or maybe had a little bit of green on the top part of it. So all of those went through the food processor. As you can see, there is a huge bowl of chopped up onions here. And I have some onions over here that are all chopped up that we'll be using for our jam. My plan with these onions, I'm just gonna cover these back up because my eyes are already burning. Um, my plan with most of the onions that I have down in the uh, cold room is actually to chop them up similarly to this and freeze dry them. And my goal behind that is that I really despise chopping onions of all of the tasks that I have to do in the kitchen. That's probably my least favorite. I'm very, very sensitive to the fumes in the air from chopping onions, and I just find the act very tedious, as well as being uncomfortable. So I would rather do a, just do it all at once and then not have to do it for the rest of the winter. So that's kind of the goal with those, but this is a really good start on that. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with getting those into the freeze dryer, and I'll bring you down to the freeze dryer room and show you, for those of you that have not um, seen our freeze dryer room, we have a Harvest Right freeze dryer and I do love it. I have to admit that canning is definitely holds first place in my heart as far as a preservation method, but the freeze dryer is absolutely fantastic and I have used it, like I said, pretty much straight all summer long and I have tons of food put up for the winter and for long-term food storage as well. Uh, most of the things like the onions I will be using throughout the winter, but a lot of the things that I stored for uh, freeze dried food, like eggs and milk and things like that, um, are actually for our long-term food storage. But there are some things that I did that we'll be using, like I said, throughout the winter. So this is a mix of Red Wing onions and Walla Walla onions. So the plan is I am going to get all eight of my freeze dryer trays filled up and four of them will go into the freezer to pre-freeze and the other four will go straight into the freeze dryer. When I'm filling my trays, it's recommended to not fill them up over the top of the tray. And for the most part, I, that's the way I've done it. If I have herbs or something in here that is, is dry and doesn't take a lot of freeze drying time, I might stack it up a little bit higher. Oh my goodness, I think I might need my goggles just for filling these trays. Good grief. Hi, sweetie. Hi. How's it going? Good. Little cold, right? My daughter is here, my eldest daughter. 
and she has come out today to help. We're going to remove all of the cupboards from the kitchen and start stripping them down because like I said, we're going to be repainting the entire kitchen, putting on a new countertop and a backsplash and I'm really, really excited about it. Have you been, is it two years? I was just trying to think, really? <laughs> yeah, for the last couple of years. And uh, so she's got more skills than I do. So she's gonna help me with this project. Okay, so I got all eight of the trays filled over here and I still have a fair bit left. So I'm actually just gonna put these ones in Ziploc bags and they will go right into the freezer. I am so thrilled with my onion harvest this year. It was my best onion harvest I have ever had which is marvelous. I love this time of year because things start slowing down a little bit for one, which is really nice, but also because my pantries are full and it's such a satisfying feeling after working so hard over the summer months, actually starting back in February when we first put the seeds in to the grow room. Uh, speaking of which, the grow room is all planted up with greens for the winter. So I've been doing microgreens. I also planted three containers of basil so that I can have fresh basil. That will just go on the windowsill. Uh, you do need, at least in our area where we get very short days in the winter, some type of extra grow light. My grow room has grow lights in it, but even for up here when I have my herbs and things sitting by the window, I have a grow light, which I'll show you by the time when we get to that point but um, because they do need a good, at least 10 hours of light. Not so much for uh, the woody herbs that are kind of going into dormancy over the winter, but for anything that you're gonna be starting, like uh, basil or anything like that, they do need lots of light. So that felt kind of nice to get my grow room started. And it is a fairly low input um, thing to have because we just have the lights set up on timers. And now that we have the sink downstairs, um, we're just doing a big renovation project downstairs and the sink's all installed for being able to do my watering and stuff fairly easily down there. And it's kind of nice to have greens growing in the dead of winter. But we'll give you guys a full tour of that when we do our pantry tour next week. Okay, we got a few onions left in here to do one more bag be missing for the next couple of videos my cupboards are going to be missing their doors and we're also of course going to be stripping all of the um, parts that everything slides into as well so it's going to be kind of rough looking for the next few videos but hopefully it won't take us too long to get it put back together again uh, I know that on this you can't really see how worn or maybe you can i'm not sure but how worn out this paint job is but it very much needs to be done let me show you the paint is peeling off everywhere just looks just awful the one thing i actually really love about this kitchen is this was a 1970s kitchen and we just put these uh, trims on the drawers and stuff just to kind of modernize them a little bit make them look a little bit more visually interesting and then put new hardware on them all but it's not a big deal to repaint them because they aren't really expensive fancy cupboards so I probably change them out every couple of years I think this will be the fourth time that I've painted these cupboards it's going to be awesome this time to have a little bit of help doing it especially somebody who knows what they're doing Okay, let's head down to the freeze dryer room and get these babies into the freeze dryer. So this is my freeze dryer room. It is a huge mess right now. It needs to be majorly cleaned and organized, but this is my four drawer freeze dryer and we are going to just lock the door, press start, and it's now going to cool the vacuum chamber for 15 minutes and then we will load our trays in. The renovations are coming along very well. This is the sink that I was talking about that I can water from for the grow room. So, so close to having this done. So I'm just gonna set my timer for 15 minutes so that I remember to go down and load those trays. Okay, now we'll put these in the freezer and those four trays into the freezer. 
so looking forward to making this jam. We're at the point in the year where I don't really even need to use the freezer for things like that because it is below freezing outside. We've had a bit of an unusual cold snap. It's usually fairly cool this time of year, but it went from being 20 degrees Celsius during the day to several de degrees below freezing within just a couple of days. So it was a bit of a rude awakening <laughs> as far as the reminding us that winter is indeed coming. So I have all our ingredients here. We're gonna move over to this side of the kitchen to do our jams. We have a bit of olive oil, some sugar, some thyme and some rosemary. And then also of course, balsamic vinegar. So I just have my stove turned on here and I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of balsamic vinegar or sorry, not balsamic vinegar, olive oil. And I'm gonna let that come up to temperature and I'm going to do four pounds of, um, of onions. And these are sweet onions. So this is a mix of uh, Spanish, I think they're called sweet Spanish onions along with some of the red wing because I have so many of the red wing onions. We put those in there as well. And we need four pounds of onions for this recipe and around two medium sized onions per pound of onions. So we're going to be using eight onions for this recipe. So we'll just let that heat up. I'm going to be doing these in my steam canner, which I have all ready to go over here. So we're going to want to cook these onions up for around 10 minutes just until they start to go golden. Okay, you know what? As usual, I'm going to change the plan. Uh, midway through <laughs> because that's just what tends to happen in my kitchen. I am going to triple this recipe because that's how many onions I have chopped here. So may as well make a light, nice, large batch. Normally I would not recommend doing a large batch of something that you've never had before, but I have done a lot of research into this recipe. Onions and balsamic vinegar are two things that I love. As much as I don't love the processing part of onions, I love, love the flavor of onions. I put onions in just about everything. And I am a huge fan of cheese and crackers and any type of kind of a sweet, savory spread. So I make a um, red pepper jelly, green pepper jelly. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a basil and a purple basil and I think it was a red pepper jelly with a little bit of the syrup from making cowboy candy and it was amazing. So this is going to be kind of a similar type of thing. This will be a lot more savory because it's not gonna have the heat in it from jalapenos or any hot peppers, but I know I'm gonna love it. So this is a very long winded way <laughs> to say that I'm comfortable with making a larger batch of this because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I am going to love it. You cannot go wrong with balsamic vinegar and onions in my opinion. And of course, a little bit of sugar too. We're building a little cabin called a bunkie out, outside, obviously outside. And uh, Dan is just about done getting the roof on. So he has to still do the shingling on the roof. And then of course, all of the finishing of the cabin, but the main cabin is all set up and it is just the cutest little building. Uh, there are lots of people asking around about prices. So the bunkies range for, from about $8,000 up to around $15,000, depending on the size. And they come with absolutely everything you need to be able to build them, except for the foundation platform and also the shingles for the roof, which makes sense since a lot of people want to make sure that they match their house or, or whatever. So we are going to be doing the... Um, asphalt shingles the same as we did. We had our roof redone last summer, I think, and they're kind of a black gray shingle. So we're gonna be doing the same thing on the bunkie. Lots of questions around the insulating of it and also heating it. So when we go up there, I'll answer those questions and show you our plans. Okay, so we're just gonna put a lid on that so those fumes don't just come up into the air and burn my eyes. Double checking our recipe here. Okay, so, oh, we're also gonna need some salt and some black pepper as well. One of the things that I always do when I am doubling or tripling recipes, and this goes for anything, whether it's a canned recipe or a recipe that I'm making for dinner, 
is when it comes to the herbs and the seasonings, I generally don't double or triple them right away. I'll put in the base amount, so whatever the base recipe is. So in this case, it was four pounds of onions. I'll put that amount of, of or whatever amount of herbs that it's calling for and mix that all in, give that a few minutes so those flavors can develop, taste it, and then make a decision about how much more I want to add. And then I'll just add little bits at a time until it's the flavor that I want. I find if I add the amount of herbs or seasonings that it calls for, for the, say, the tripled recipe, it's way, way too overwhelming or, or overpowering. Um, so that's just something that I do. So I'm just gonna give this a stir. Our timer just went off for our freeze dryer. So we'll leave that. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit more. Want to make sure our vent is closed over there. Okay, we're going to press continue. And now it is going to freeze these. Had I pre frozen those, I would have um, skipped this option of freezing them, but since these ones aren't frozen, it usually takes a few hours for them to freeze and then it'll start freeze drying. All right, they look perfect. I would show you, but it would just steam the camera up. So now we are going to add our balsamic vinegar. I don't want to take that little dispenser out of here. This is very time consuming. <laughs> ah. Never mind. I'm going to end up using the whole bottle anyway. It wasn't full, but there's only a tiny bit left, so I could have taken the dispenser out. Oh well. Here, I'll show you what these look like. All golden. So we're gonna add our vinegar. And our sugar. Okay. Now we're going to add our rosemary. Let's go crush this all up. And thyme. Oh my goodness, friends, this smells absolutely amazing. Oh my. So we're going to cook this for 45 minutes. Add a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt. I bet you this would be delicious on a toasted baguette. Mm -mm. So now we are going to cook this down, get it up to a simmer. And for 45 minutes, until it's nice and thick. Oh, it really does smell amazing. Just gonna give it a little bit of a taste. I'm gonna keep the lid off of this so that it can reduce a little bit. A couple drops of vinegar left in there. Tidy up this mess and then we will head outside to go see what Dan's up to. We just missed Dan. He actually went in the house to go grab a bite to eat, but I will show you where we're at. Oh my goodness, it's so sparkly. Oh, beautiful, cold, but beautiful. Uh, but I'll show you where we're kind of at with what we're planning with the power for the cabin and the heating. So if you'll remember over in our cabin over here, we have a Blue Eddy power system. So we are going to be putting another Blue Eddy power system in this cabin as well. <clears throat> and our goal is to eventually hook both of them up to our big uh, solar array that's gonna go right here, that's going to power our house so that the whole property will be on solar. We're always going to keep our hydro as well um, as backup. 
And then for heat, we are going to be installing a little wood stove right in this corner here. At least this is where I think we're going to put it. And they're specifically designed for small cabins like this. And then we'll also have backup electric heat in here as well. So the walls themselves are not insulated, but the floor is insulated and the ceiling or the roof will be insulated as well. So we think because it's only 220 square feet total space that we should be able to keep it nice and toasty warm with wood heat and backup electric heat as well. And the other thing is, is this cabin is going to be primarily used in the spring, summer and fall months as well. But if anybody did want to come out in the winter time out here, we're hoping to have it nice and toasty. So we do have some of the hardware on for the windows here. And these windows open right up like that for in the summertime for lots of airflow. We do have lots of trees around this cabin, so it should stay fairly cool in the, um, in the summertime. Okay, we are going to head back down to the house and finish up with our canning. So we have about five minutes, uh, four minutes left on our timer before our jam is done, but it's thickened up nicely. So I'll show you when we're gonna put it into our jars. And I'm going to use half pint jars because I don't use half pint jars very much. And I have a ton of them and I'm all out of pint jars and I don't wanna go buy more canning jars. So I may as well use up what I have. And also I suspect that this is going to be uh, an adult flavor kind of jam. I know that I'm going to love it. I think Dan's probably gonna like it too, but I can't see very many of the kids liking it. So having small jars like this is going to work perfectly. My goodness, this smells amazing. I think this is going to be really good on pork as well. Look at that. This one has a little chip in it. One other good reason to wash the rims of your jars because you can feel them if there's any little chips. That's actually happened to me a couple of times, maybe two or three times this year. So we're going to can these for 15 minutes in our steam canner. Okay, we are going to pause for lunch. I will show you these when they come out of the canner and then we are going to get to dismantling this kitchen and starting to get these cupboards stripped down. I probably won't share with you every single step of this process, but I will take you along for some of it at least. So I did end up getting three more quarts of lard from all that lard that I ground up the other day. These ones just came out of the crock pot. And then that's it for all the lard for the winter. So that's awesome. So yes, so now all of the lard is done for the winter as well. So that's great. Okay, we're gonna stop and take a lunch break and then we'll be back with you again. We're going to get all of these cupboards taken off, brought down to the shop. We've had the fire going in the shop since this morning, so hopefully it's not freezing cold down there and we're gonna start getting these stripped down. See you again in a bit. All right, friends, we're gonna head outside, but I wanted to show you the finished jam and it looks just about black. Actually, it does look black on the camera and it is delicious. I had it with some cheese and crackers. Very, very good, very savory, sweet, kind of the perfect combination. Most of the cupboards and drawers are off over here. So we're just gonna head down to the shop now and start getting the paint stripped off those. And while we're outside, we're gonna just take a quick run up to the cabin and see where Dan's at with that. Looks like he has most of the roof on. He was saying earlier that it's pretty time consuming putting it on. And he can do that part from, or most of it from inside the cabin, but he's going to get some scaffolding to
do the actual roofing itself for the shingles rather that'll match the house down there. Okay. Oh, we got the hardware on the door. Hello. Okay. Lots of the roof is done. Doesn't that look so cute? Looks so good, hun. Look at that, it looks so good. I love it. Um, I'm just gonna head down to the shop and start stripping off those doors. Bye. I just love how cute that little cabin is. We're really just trying to beat the snow and get that roof on because we can putter around on the inside. I mean, it's pretty much finished on the inside already but um, we can putter around with that once um, <clears throat> the snow falls and we have some heat in there. Look at how beautiful it looks. So beautiful. Okay, I'll show you what we're using here. Heavy duty stripper. It's supposed to be low vac, but it is pretty stinky in here. There is something very satisfying looking about bubbled up paint though, isn't there? Oh, look at that. Yeah, that one, those ones seemed like they were starting to feel as soon as I put it on. I thought I stripped this when I did the green, but maybe I didn't. So this was the green color that I had it before, which I actually really regretted painting over because I loved it so much. And I may do something similar for the new color. Yeah, I think so. That, oh, right, when I did that really horrible blue. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't last very long. Did not last long at all. Okay, I'm gonna have to put one of these boards up beside you there, because I, I cannot be bent over like that too old. All right, friends, I'm sure you don't wanna just sit and watch me stripping this, these um, covered doors for the next hour. So I will catch you up with the kitchen renovation in the next video. Hopefully we will be putting the paint on these cupboards. And like I said, I haven't completely locked in on what color I'm going to do. I'm actually planning on doing a couple of different colors in the kitchen. So you'll be able to see that next time. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.